Welcome back to the Gun Collective. My name is John Patton, and I've got Ben here with me. Ben, how are you doing, man? Not too bad. How are you? I'm, I'm freaking fantastic. We've got an unloaded Petra here, and guys, we are going to show you very simply how to mount an optic today. We've got the KDG side lock mount. It's a QD mount. We're going to show you how to put the optic in here, how to put this on the rifle, how to get it set up for your precision rifle game, because that is the all popular thing right now. So where do we get started, Ben? What do we do first? Well, first you wanna take your mount, and if you're running a, a single mount like this, you wanna check your spacing. So you wanna look at what your scope, what size your scope is, so you can get your spacing right in between the two uh, rings. So you don't want them like too far up or too far back. You want them pretty much in the center. So you want to have everything balanced so that you're not crushing the tube or interfering with the way this optic is mounted so it's not like wobbly or anything wonky like that. Yeah, you don't want your ring too far back to your uh, your adjustments because you actually stick this erector in here and then when you go to turn it, it'll actually stick. Okay, so that's, uh, that's actually a pretty common thing. So definitely try and get them as evenly spaced as possible. All right, let's get started. So the idea with the KDG side lock is that it's meant to be one hand operated. You guys have seen these on uh, TGC before. So there's a little bit of a slider here. So you push in and back and it locks so that when you go to rock it on here, it stays in place. So we'll put it about here and we can move this as needed just like that. So you rock and lock. So it's locked in place. We've got the front there. We've got the rear. Let's go ahead and take that rear off. So then we need to torque yep, these two down. There we go. Okay. So those are set. Now we just put the optic up in here. Okay. So guys, you can see we've got a pretty good balance front to rear in spacing here and here as well as here and here, just so that we don't interfere with the erector that's inside the optic and interfere with that movement. Okay. Uh, throw the tops on? Yep, you put the tops on. Yeah, when I put these on, I try to just not snug them up all the way, just leave them a little loose, because I like to set my gaps on each side. I don't know if it's like a little bit of an OCD thing, or I just like to have the same gap on each side of the, the ring. Okay. And then also if you're running something with a scope mount with a level in the back, you can uh, adjust that level too. Okay. Now guys, this is specific obviously to this KDG mount, but a lot of what we're talking about applies across the board. QD mounts are very similar. The method that is different is the method of attachment to the rifle, not necessarily how the rings need to be tightened and things like that. So the concept of mounting this optic is not specific to this mount. All right, how, do the, how does those gaps look? All right, so we've got our gap set, now what? So now you want to just leave this a little loose so that you can move it a little bit and you get your uh, your levels. Okay. These were another Amazon pickup, super cheap. Yeah. Uh, any really level will work as long as your um, as they have a flat base on them. Okay. Let's see. So this one actually has a magnet on it so that it'll stick to things that are magnetic. So we've got uh, we've got two here. This one's obviously meant to hang off the side. This one kind of goes under, is that right? Yeah, so usually I take this, the, the smaller one, and I put it here on top of the, where the charging handle is, Okay. on top of the pick rail, because that's pretty much the flattest spot for there, and I can also get it underneath the scope housing. And we know that's consistent, generally speaking, on a, on a quality, yeah. <laughs> you know, on a quality rifle, that is consistently flat. Yeah. Okay. So I take, Whatever other one, your other level you're gonna use, um, and I put usually put it on here. On this top kinda, of the the top adjustment. Yeah, this adjustment. one's kind of magnetic, so it kind of sticks there, which is nice. So then I usually take if I have it in a vise or something like that, or I use a a bipod, I'll take this and I'll just set it so that it, the back one that's on the. So you're trying to get the rifle level, and then we will level the optic to the rifle. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So that one's that one's dead on. Okay. So this one's pretty close. Just, wanna, just a little bit of adjustment, bit, and that's it. Boom. Okay. So now what? So now I just pretty much snug them up, just snug those screws up a little bit, just to get them so the scope's not going to move when I when I torque everything down. And you always want to go crisscross with each other, so you're not screwing down the one whole side at a time. And that helps you with your your twist too. Say so. so if you just do all your tightening on this side, it'll actually twist the scope toward that side. Okay, because you're putting friction. Yep, correct. Okay, so those are pretty much just hand just tight. Just hand tight, yep. 
Okay. So you get your uh, you get your torque wrench. And it says 17 inch pounds. Okay, for this particular optic. Now it's different it's, it's for each op or uh, optic mount. Every mount should pretty much come with a piece of paper that says, "Hey, this is what uh, your torque sets torque settings should be." Okay. So yeah, you want to do the same thing. You want to go caddy corner, and I always just leave all my uh, levels on there, um, just so I see if anything's moving at all. Still looking at your levels. Your levels are still matching up. Okay. Keep doing this, then switch. Okay. All right. So those are all torqued. Yep, that's pretty much it. So yeah, you just check your levels again, make sure they're both uh, they're both right on. Okay, so those look really good. Yep. Uh, that mean it, it's mounted at this point. So the scope is mounted on here. What's the next thing to do? We want to set what's called eye relief, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can do it in prone. You could do it just right off the bench here. Uh, I like to set mine prone. Um, because that's pretty much where I want to try to get my head position at. Okay. Um, now, I, I heard when I was at Loophole Optics Academy that the reason you do this at prone and then you crank it up to maximum magnification is because that's when your optic is going to have the smallest eye box, AKA the area where you have that proper eye relief. So if you're setting it in the worst possible conditions or the smallest possible conditions, you know it'll be good once you open that up and extend that eye box, uh, when, whether you're standing, uh, kneeling, Etc. from the bench or prone. Is that correct? Yeah, usually um, when you're shooting prone, your head's not going to move that much. So that'd be the best place to set it. So that's that's a good, consistent place for yep, you to go, correct. okay, this is where I'm going to set it, and then everything else should be okay from there. Yeah. And with something like this, it's a little easier to move it around. You can kind of pop it off and move it oh, back yeah, in this, front. This is, these are real nice. So let's take those off. I'll push in. Yep, just push it in, and that's it. And you can move it back and forth. All right, so for now, we'll just go ahead and set it. I like to use the rear of the gun as my kind of basis. With these, you have to actually lock them open. So I'll go ahead and kind of get the rear of the optic. And this is just from my own experience. Let's find a slot and kind of get it lined up with the rear of the gun. That's generally on an AR, a decent place to get started, right? Yeah, that's that's where I pretty much put mine on. Um, if I'm shooting something that has like a just little buttstock, um, it really helps with people that are different sizes too. So you have a, you have a consistent place where your scope is. So. Okay. So let's go ahead and set the eye relief. Okay. So I guess now we would set the eye relief. Normally we would do this in the prone, but we're gonna do it here for the sake of filming, right? Yeah, I mean, you could, you could set it like this. It's, it's not gonna be so much so that you need to move it back and forth like a crazy amount, but yeah, you can get it pretty close doing it like this. Okay, so this stock is already adjusted for my length of pull preference. I'm a big bastard, so I need it kind of stuck out here. What do I need to do here? What's, so what am I looking get at? Get like you, get behind the gun. Okay. Uh, get that on your shoulder. All right. You put your head, you close your eyes, get it so your, your head's all comfortable, your, your grip's all comfortable. And then um, what I do is I have somebody either, somebody help me or either I hold up a piece of paper, a white, white piece of paper in front of it, and you open your eye. Okay. Can you see all white? Yep, actually, <laughs> it's actually, it's actually pretty perfect. I'll move back and forth just to confirm. Yeah. It's actually really good. <laughs> so, that, so that whole thing should be should be white, no yeah. black around the edges or fuzziness. Yeah, okay. it's great. Okay. <laughs> All right. So normally, what you would just do if it wasn't right is take this off and kind of move it back and forth back and on forth, the rifle. Yeah. But for now, this is good. Uh, guys, that's a very simple concept. Setting that eye relief is not a difficult thing. No. Just move it. Now, some guys will move this back and forth in the mount as opposed to moving the mount. What do you think about that? Uh, well, there's two different ways you could do it. It's, it depends on if you have a single mount like this or you have two rings on, say, like a bolt gun. Okay. Um, usually, if I'm running a single mount like this, I'll just move it back and forth. But if I'm running a, a bolt gun that doesn't have that much adjustment, I'll just uh, move it in the rings a little bit. Okay, I see what you're saying. So typically on an AR style rifle with a ton of rail, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and move that wherever yeah, you, you need can, it. Like for me, since you're so much longer, I would have to have it probably back about two more notches, just so my eye relief would be better because my neck's not as long and I'm not as big as you. <laughs> you calling me a gorilla? <laughs> 
Well, the, the stock position you pretty much are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got it set to Gorilla Spec. Yeah. So guys, this is it, I guess, right? Yeah, pretty much. You just want to always follow your torque specs. That's, that's where, key. That's where you get into problems with, with this kind of stuff. You just, you end up crushing this tube or getting it too close to your erector, and you, you that sticks in there, and then you'll have some zeroing issues. And, sure, yeah. sure. And that, that gets into a little bit more complex talk about how these operate, mm -hmm. but the fact of the matter is balance here, front and rear, that's key. You want it evenly spaced and you want to set your eye relief and that's that. Uh, guys, uh, I appreciate you all watching. I appreciate you, Ben, no for showing us this. Ben is kind of our armorer and precision guy, so that's pretty cool. I guess we need to take this thing out to the range at some point and uh, get it zeroed. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, guys, that's it for this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, hit like. Check out the links in the video description. We'll show off these tools, the levels, etc. I may even find a link for you guys to get this stuff if you want it. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon.